Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode, where in this video we're going to continue our express series and now we're going to be going over dynamic routes. So specifically in this video we'll learn about dynamic routes including route parameters and query parameters. But so before we start, what is a dynamic route? Well so far in this series, each route we have defined has been static. In other words, the route is basically just a hard-coded string. So you see, all these are hard-coded. We just have my route, dash, um, we're using our router object, this is dash users, this is dash users, dash wit code, and so on. They're not dynamic, they're all just a hard-coded string. But routes can also be dynamic. For example, say we had a page that listed all the registered users on our application at dash users. So say we go to dash users here, and this returns a list of all the profiles of each user registered on our application. Well, if we had a page that listed all these registered users on our application, maybe clicking on a profile, say there's a profile on here, um, that's dash wit code. If we clicked on wit code, it would take us to dash users dash wit code. And on the other hand, say we clicked on something like um, another user called Bill, then it would take us to dash users dash Bill one dash Bill. Or we clicked another user, it would take us to someone named Phil, if that was someone else who we clicked on. But you can clearly see that this really isn't feasible. As if we had to create a route for each user, that would just take forever and it just doesn't really make any sense. So instead, what we want to do is have a dynamic route that accepts route parameters. So now it would basically be whatever profile you click on, then that username will get placed here instead of just a hard-coded URL. And so again, once again to do this, we have we can make a dynamic route by using by making a route that accepts route parameters. And so what are route parameters? Well, route parameters are variables made from sections, oh, made from sections of the URL. For example, instead of having dash users dash wit code hard coded, we could just supply a parameter here and we could just say this is username. So you can make use of this colon right here. And so the route parameter is identified by the colon. So we can see this colon, so our route parameter is called username. And then the username um, of the profile that we click on in dash users will replace this um, route parameter right here. So if we click on wit code, this username will become wit, wit code. If we click on bill, this will become bill, and so on. So you can see now we basically can solve that issue of making a route for every user. Instead, we have a dynamic route. So now let me show you how to make use of this dynamic route right here. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna change this to use some ES6 syntax. And we're also gonna get rid of this. We're gonna use a dollar sign to place in a variable. And what we're gonna type in here is, you'll see this, I'll go over this more in a second, but request.params.username. Because remember, this here is the request that we're receiving from the browser. And now, let's go into this, and let's type in dash users dash wit code. We get this is wit code's profile. Now let's type in, um, say, bill. We get users dash bill. This is bill's profile. So we can see how it's dynamically changing. Um, and say we can do dash, I don't know, ice cream. This is ice cream's profile. And we can further see this too with our um, dev tools and go to network. And let me type this in again. And we can see we have a get request to dash users dash ice cream. So what is happening is whatever we type into the URL <clears throat> is being placed here because it's dynamic. This is our route parameter. And then we access the route parameter with rec.params and then the name of the parameter, which is username. So in this code here, the contents of the URL are being sent back in a response to the client accessing the web page. And we saw this is done through request.params.username. And specifically, what rec.params is, is it allows us to access all the parameters, route parameters, passed to the URL. So we could even make this route more dynamic. So say we have dash username, say we want to add another, make this route even more dynamic, and let's have fave like channel, like fave YouTube channel. This is, and we could say this is someone's profile and their favorite YouTube, I spell that right, channel is, and we can do new lines because of this ES6 syntax, and their favorite YouTube channel is 
wit code, of course, or no, not just that, but um, rec, getting ahead of myself, rec.params.fave channel. So we've got two route parameters now. We've got one here, we've got one here. And so this will say this is, and it'll be whatever is passing URL, and their favorite YouTube channel is this right here. So now let's see this in action. So we got ice cream and their favorite YouTube channel is of course Witcode. So now we get this is ice cream's profile and their favorite YouTube channel is Witcode. Let's say we could do um, Bruce and their favorite YouTube channel is, I don't know, that one everyone likes, Mr. Beast. So we could say this is Bruce's profile and their favorite YouTube channel is Mr. Beast. So once again, going back in here, so request.params, this is in rec.params right here, is an object that contains the keys passed to the route. So for example, it'll contain the keys username and fav channel. And therefore, we can access these by request.params.username and request.params.fav channel. But so now we've talked about route parameters, but now what about query parameters? Because route parameters aren't the only thing we can access using Express. We can also access query parameters. And what query parameters are, they're, they're kind of similar to route parameters, but what they are is an extension of a website's URL that contains information such as queries or user preferences versus route parameters, which is something more permanent like um, the actual user's profile. And when it comes to the structure of query parameters, Query parameters are in key value pairs and always come after a question mark and they're separated by an ampersand. So we might see something like www.witcode.com and then we might have, um, let's just do it like this, witcode dash um, posts. And then after this, we could have a question mark like this. And then we could do say yes, a variable like theme set to dark and maybe something like a sort equals ascending. So we've got two parameters, two query parameters here. We've got theme and we've got sort. And you know they're query parameters because they come after this question mark. And we know there's two because they're separated always by an ampersand right here. And this is the key of the query parameter, which is theme. And this is the value, which is dark. And similarly, this is the value or the key here, sort. And this is the value ascending. And so um, to access query parameters is very similar to the way we were accessing our, um, our route parameters. So they're accessed by rec, but instead of params, rec.query, and then the key of the query parameter. So using um, a URL similar to this, we can access rec.query.theme similarly by, let me change this. Actually, let me do it in here, and I'll change this to be that nice syntax as well. And let's just say whatever was put in. So it's rec.query, and then we're gonna pass in, let's just pass in one right now. Let's pass in theme. And now, I'm over here. And now if we go into this, and I believe it's dash users, and then let's do theme equals um, dark. Like say we're in dark theme. You can see we get printed out dark. So we're accessing this query parameter like this. Let's say we want to now also do another query parameter. Well, we could do rec.query. What's this one? Sort. So and now, if we access this without passing it, we just get undefined, which is probably some error handling that we'd want to do. But if we do pass in sort, say equals ASC for ascending, we get dark and ascending. Anyway, let's go back in. But so that's really all I wanted to show you with this video. So this is a nice little quick one than normal. But um, so if you um, have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. But besides that, I want to thank you for watching, subscribing, and liking this video. And um, besides that, I guess I'll see you in the next one where we are going to be start to talk about Express Middleware. So this is an interesting topic. I um, hope to see you in the next video, but thank you for watching and have a good one.